Hi there, everyone. Today, um, we're going to talk about multiplying decimals by whole numbers, and this is standard 6.ns.2.3. You want to make sure that you're writing everything down that you see on the screen. All right, and as you can see on this screen, it says, are you ready? You want to have your composition notebook. You want to have your colored pencils, your regular pencil, headphones so that you can listen to the video, and your listening ears should be on. As you can see, you can see the standard here. It says fluently add, subtract, multiply, and divide multi-digit decimals using the standard algorithm for each operation. So that's what we're going to be working on today. You want to make sure to write that standard down um, just like you would normally on the title page. Back here on the title page, by the way, multiply decimals by whole numbers, 6.ns.2.3. You want to have this as the heading in your composition notebook for your video. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. So the first thing we're going to look at is the title of your page should say multiply decimals by whole numbers. And I've put remember this here because basically there are just a few things to remember about each process. So the first thing that you want to remember is that you're going to set the problem up and multiply as if there were no decimals. So that should be pretty easy. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so, um, sorry, all of my formatting was a little crazy there. So the three things that you want to remember are to set the problem up and multiply as if there were no decimals. The second thing is to swoop the decimal out and count the spaces. And the third thing is to swoop the decimal, the same number of spaces, back into the answer. So that may seem a little crazy right now because you haven't seen a problem, but let me go ahead and explain using a problem. So the problem we're going to use here is 2.8 times 7. So you want to go ahead and write that on your paper after you've written all three of those steps. You want to make sure to structure your notes the way that I'm um, structuring mine here as well and use colored pencils if you have them so that you can see the different details between each step. So don't squish everything on one line. Make sure that it's neat. It's very important that you can use these notes again when you go to study. So now we're just going to multiply as if there were no decimals. So we're going to forget about that decimal altogether and we get 196 because 8 times 7 is 56. Carry the 5. 7 times 2 is 14 plus 5 is 19. So you get 196. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do step 2 here where it says swoop the decimal out and count the spaces. So we went one space out from where the decimal is to the right. So that's one space. And now we're going to count the spaces back into the answer, starting at the far right, which is where we swoop the decimal out to. So we count one space back in. So our final answer for this problem is going to be 19.6. Pretty easy, right? All right, so let's look at our next problem. This one is going to be an on-your-own problem. So now it's your turn. You want to go ahead and write down 15.33 times six, and you want to pause the video now and do that problem. Okay, so pause the video now. All right, welcome back. Let's go ahead and look and see what you got for the math. So for the math, we've got six times three is 18, carry the one. Six times three is 18 plus one is 19, carry the one. Six times five is 30 plus one is 31, carry the three. And 6 times 1 is 6 plus 3 is 9. So now you have 9198. So we've completed that first step where we multiply as if there are no decimals. The next step, remember, is to swoop this the number of decimal places out from our factor. So our factor is 15.33. So we're going to go ahead and show two spaces right there over my pause sign. <laughs> um, so it's going to be swoop, swoop. And then you count two spaces because you went out two spaces. And now when you go to put the decimal back in, you're going to swoop, swoop back in two spaces. So your final answer for this problem will be 91.98. So you want to go ahead and write that and then put a box around it. Our next problem says find 4 times 0 0.012. So I've written a helpful hint over here to the right that I would also like you to write. So that helpful hint is this. Um, I want you to make sure that when you're multiplying decimals and by whole numbers or even decimals by decimals that you understand that you want to set the number up with more digits not necessarily the greater number because we know that 4 is greater than 0 0.012 but 0 0.012 has more numbers in it so you want to set the number with the most digits up on top now the property that allows us to flip-flop those numbers like that is the commutative property of multiplication because it says that 4 times 6 is the same as 6 times 4 so it doesn't matter which order we multiply them in so let's go ahead and set that problem up now so we're going to start by writing 0 0.012 right here because it's got the most digits so it's going to make our life a little easier when we go to multiply and then we're going to multiply it by 4. Now this problem is going to be a special problem, but I'm not going to tell you why just yet. So let's go ahead and multiply again as if there were no decimals, just like we learned. 4 times 2 is 8, 
four times one is four. Four times zero is zero. So we're out of we're out of things to multiply at this point. So now we're going to go ahead and count the number of swoops out. So now what we want to look at is swooping. So let's go ahead and do our swoop, 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 because we have swoop, swoop, swoop. So how many spaces is that? That's one, two, three. So we're going to count that as three spaces. I expect that you're writing this out to the side for right now in your notes so that um, when you go to do the work, you understand exactly what you did. So we did one, two, three spaces out. And remember, we need to do how many spaces back in? Same number. Starting at the far right, we're going to do swoop, swoop, and swoop and place our decimal. Now, as you can see, we have an empty space right here. Um, some people have called that an egg carton. So you wanna make sure that in that empty space that you do what we call annexing a zero. So you wanna make sure that you add that zero there so that you have that as part of your answer. Now, this is a zero, so I'm gonna write a little note here that we had to annex this zero. This is a zero that we have to annex. In our final answer, we're going to have an answer of 0 0.048 and sometimes kids get confused because of this zero right up here in the front so I want to make sure that I explain the difference so that zero is called a leading zero you want to make sure that you write that down that is a formatting issue so it's kind of like forgetting to capitalize the first letter of a sentence so if you don't capitalize the first letter of the word the it's still the word the but it's a formatting problem. You need to capitalize the first letter. So that's the deal with that leading zero. So when you're giving me answers or when you're typing your answers into the computer, your answers should be 0 0.048. It will never, you never, ever, ever want to do just point, I'm sorry, let me go back. You never want to do just 0 0.048. So this is a no-no. I'm going to go ahead and put a big X through it. That's a no-no because you need to have this leading zero. So now we can see that our correct answer is 0 0.048. And we have the zero that we annexed in green because remember we had to swoop, swoop, swoop three times and we only had two digits in our answer. And now we have the leading zero that we have there for formatting so that it's the correct structure and arrangement. So hopefully that makes sense. And as usual, you want to make sure that you're writing everything down that you see on the screen here. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our next page here. So on our next page, it's gonna say, now it's your turn. So I want you to go ahead and pause the video now, and I want you to find, fi um, find 12 times 0 0.0032. So you wanna pause the video now and set that problem up and complete. Excellent, hopefully you did well. So let's go ahead and see. So the first thing that you needed to do was follow that helpful hint that I gave you before. And since 0 0.0032 has the most number of digits, you wanna make sure to set that up on top. So you want to first check to make sure that you set the problem up like this. It's possible to solve it the other way. It just looks, um, and it's a little more difficult to visually see where you need to multiply. So then our first step, as usual, is just to multiply as if there were no um, decimals. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. Everything else is zeros there. We need a 0 for a placeholder. 1 times 2 is 2. And 1 times 3 is 3. So now we're going to go ahead and add this up. So we have 4 plus 0 is 4, 6 plus 2 is 8, and then you have 3 here. So we finished that first step, which is to multiply as if there were no decimals. The next step is our swoop, swoop. So now we're going to count our swoops. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have four spaces here. So we want to go ahead and off to the side, write four spaces. So check to make sure that you've done that. And then we're going to swoop, swoop back in. How many spaces? That's right, four. One, two, three, four. And as you can see in this problem, we need to annex a zero. That's why I had you do this one on your own because it's practicing the skill we just learned. So we have to add that zero. And you wanna make sure that your final answer, by the way, your final answer is never going to be here. So this will never count as your final answer. So you need to write it off to the side, away from the swoops. I need to be able to see what you know as your final answer. So your final answer is going to be written off to the side, and it should be, if it's formatted correctly, 0 0.0384. And then you should have a box around it because that was the correct answer. Okay, I had to clean that up a little bit. It was bothering me. So remember, you have this zero that you annexed here, but then you also have your leading zero there. So your final answer should look exactly like this. How'd you do? Hopefully everything went well. We'll see you next time.